Okay, the balance of the transmission is totally dedicated to your calls. I'm going to try to keep my answer short. 877-789-2539. If you disagree, 877-789-ALEX. I'd love to hear from you. Let's hurry through these calls. Debbie in North Carolina, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hi, Alex. Hi. Um, I want to add something to the conversations about freedoms. I, I mean, I, I had a response to your other question. Did you know that it, I well, have some friends that are the Mao Christian Chinese, and do you know that they tell me that they have terrorist attacks inside their country, they have all these riots, and when they go to fly on a plane in China, they don't have a TSA checking them out. Yeah, China is having real terrorism, and when you have real terrorism, or people fighting the communist government, it's called terrorism, uh, they, they ignore it. See, when, by the way, there are real terror attacks in America that I've learned about over the years, but you're never told about them. There are real, like you hear about a chemical plant blowing up. Some of those are like angry employees, whatever, but you don't hear about it. it when you see instant PR and instant talking points, you know it's staged. I mean, for people that aren't in media, they just don't understand this. There's pre-packaging. They're ready for it. They're staging it. And, and the local media doesn't know. They just kind of go with what the nationals are putting out. But that's where it's staged. Well, as a lawyer, this really does disturb me. That I, in fact, they laugh about it. It's sad. They laugh. They say, you're losing your freedoms, and we're gaining more in China. Oh, listen, that's what, listen. That's what they tell me. That's what they tell me. Paul Watson's uh, wife works with us now. She updates stories and stuff, does a great job. She's got like two degrees, uh, but, but, but is working for Infowars.com right now. And, and she's uh, lived in England a long time, but she's Chinese. And Paul goes, now has been to Chinese three or four times to China. And he says China is completely free compared to England and the U.S. That's why tourism's down $40 billion a year now in the U.S. People won't come here. They're like, what? And again, it's not about security. If you're select groups, the government lets you in. It's for the general public. It's, it, it's slave training, Debbie. Well, what people have to realize that this is getting really sick, that if we don't stand up for our rights, we're going to end up like the Chinese did under Mao. You hear me? We're going to end up like the, like the Chinese were under Mao. And, it, and who knows? Maybe it'll be coming China coming to our rescue because they want our, our natural resources. Well, I'm going to be you know? honest. I've, I've actually made a study of it. Uh, the, the Chinese people are super hardcore freedom. They are super hardcore anti-communist. You've got less than, what, 2% or any uh, are inner party running 6.5 billion people. And they have something like 700 riots a week or something. I mean, cops beat somebody to death there. They kill 20 cops. I mean, you know, so the government, that's the issue with China, is that is the communist are on the verge of falling. I appreciate your call. Uh, great points, Debbie. No, Chinese are just uh, great people. I mean, it, they, they really have been through hell. Uh, and again, thank you, Debbie. Uh, and so uh, Americans went through tyranny and wanted liberty, and we became this great place. Now we're the great-great-grandchildren of these people. We're a bunch of spoiled brats. People just think freedom is just going to be there like flipping a light switch and the light comes on. People don't understand. It's very hard to keep freedom, as Thomas Jefferson said. He said, even if you defend it 110%, you're probably not going to be able to keep it. But if you're like, oh, I'm going to, you know, the, 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 there's a football game on today, the Browns versus the Bengals. I'm going to see how Colt McCoy's doing. If America wasn't in all this trouble, that could be what you were obsessed with. Jane in California, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, Alex. I've been listening to the show like five years now. I just love the information you provide. Um, I, I just was, I think it was the president. <laughs> the reason I, I'm not sure is because it just barely caught it. But it was during one of those six celebrations this morning. And to all the Christians in the audience, you all should have been sick to your stomach. Because I think he was quoting a psalm. And I was thinking... You no more believe in the Bible than than we all believe in 9/11 and the official story. Well, listen, I could hire top speechwriters and have them write speeches and sit here and read off a teleprompter and look like I'm sincere. He reads off a teleprompter. I don't like Bill Clinton, but I'll tell you, Bill Clinton actually was as close to a president actually running things since JFK. Not a good guy, but Bill Clinton's actually a globalist. He's actually very high level. He actually 
you know, would barely sleep to know policy. He's a globalist, but Bill Clinton didn't need teleprompters. I mean, with Obama, he will not speak. Teleprompters have broken before, and he can't talk. He is an actor reading off a teleprompter. So it's fun to hate him. He's an unsavory globalist. But at the end of the day, he's a total puppet, Jane. Pretty scary. Well, I just have one question. Um, because I am blind, um, I, I find it hard to, to really, like in two minutes, tell somebody the evidence of why we shouldn't believe the official story. But what would you say would be the absolute, if you just had one piece of evidence you could present? Okay, we have an article up on the site today, all bibliographed with links to mainstream media. Uh, with six of the ten commissioners saying there's a criminal cover-up and they don't know what happened with 9-11 uh, and the government could be involved. You, I mean, you can you can tell them six of the ten commissioners uh, and two of the three lawyers are saying there's a cover-up. Sybil Edmonds, the FBI NSA translator, heard the Pentagon in command of Al-Qaeda and bin Laden on the day of 9-11. That's come out in federal court. Uh, I would just tell them Google Building 7. And Google police say get back from Building 7. Yeah, but I didn't just have the CNN and other clips a cop saying get back. I've gone to New York and actually interviewed the cops who were on well, the tape. And, and, today's and, the first day I ever heard about this part where the reporter was saying it and the building was still standing. You know, now if my husband had still been here, you know, he probably would have told me that if he'd seen that clip. But. But no, they don't want to. The Building Seven is it. not mentioned in the giant 9/11 Commission report. It is not mentioned. Uh, Rumsfeld's been asked about it on uh, Eric Mancow Mueller's show and said, "I don't, I don't know about that. That building doesn't exist." And he sounded really. I mean, they don't want to discuss it because they screwed up that day. By the way, the CIA was based in the building, and then of course the head of emer deputy head of emergency management went public about bombs in the building and uh, died one month after being on the show <clears> of <throat> one of those fast acting cancers. Okay, uh, he was threatened and changed his story, and then they said it still can't be trusted. Get rid of him. Barry Jennings. Oh, yeah. If you're an actual eyewitness, quote, an authority, and you start blowing the whistle, it's bye-bye. Bye-bye, Birdie. Uh, let's go ahead and take another call here. Angie in North Carolina, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Um, I have a question and an interesting little piece of information uh, I recently, it wasn't until about a year or two after September 11th that I really began to search for answers. I knew that day that the towers were demolished. I just assumed, I think like most people did, that bombs were planted by terrorists in the building beforehand. So I started searching for answers after that and eventually um, made my way to you. And recently I decided to look for your original September 11, 2001 broadcast. And I was wondering when the last time you listened to that was because I was really taken aback by uh, the information you were giving on the day as it was unfolding. It wasn't too different from listening to one of your shows currently. Well, that's because we knew it was coming, ma'am. I, I, you know, people keep saying I predicted it two months before. A year before 9-11, I said they're going to blow stuff up, probably the World Trade Center. The only tape we found was the one two months before. Uh, 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 stay there. I'm going to come right back to you. I, I, I want to hear what I was saying. I told you they were going to set up the police state in the name of fighting, quote, extremist Muslims. And the whole time it was going to be for people that didn't want the foreign banks to butcher this country. Yeah, I was a kook 16 years ago talking about the Federal Reserve being private. New polls are out. It's not 85% that want to abolish or audit the Fed. It's 89%. 89% of us are evil. I remember being called a conspiracy theorist 16 years ago on radio. People calling in and going, you nuts, saying the Federal Reserve's federal. It's, it's federal. Well, look at the name. Like Federal Express or Federal Cleaners or Federal Ammunition or Federal Bank. <laughs> I bet they got a federal pizza. I haven't Googled it, but it's about as federal as uh, FedEx, Federal Express. Is uh, FedEx federal? No, it's private. There was a time when it had government on it. It was trusted. 
All right. Um, we were uh, talking to Angie in North Carolina. No, I've not listened to my 9-11 broadcast. Yeah, uh, I tried. I was trying to get a hold of you all week this week. I thought it might be a good idea if you had had an opportunity to review it and maybe rebroadcast it today at some point. And if you don't have, obviously may not have time for that today, but maybe you should consider making it available to people. It just, it, it really confirms that uh, you just, you've known what you were talking about from the very beginning. And for a lot of us that uh, had not been listening to you as yet back then, uh, I mean, you were talking about uh, evidence and talking points that led up to that day and how you had been uh, warning people about it. And I, I had heard uh, that, uh, your prediction about it that you made in July, it was actually my birthday, July 25th of 2001. Um, but and you talked about, you know, how, where the country was going to go from there that day. And uh, it, you were just, you nailed it all. It was all well, well, very accurate. Well, Angie, thank you. I would love, and yes, it's all over the web. Um, Hundreds of thousands of people listen to it just on the YouTubes I've seen. I haven't gone and listened to it because I don't like listening to myself. But that's why I announced earlier in the week a contest. Uh, it's five thousand dollars in prizes: three thousand first place, fifteen hundred second place, five hundred third place of compilations of Alex Jones predictions. Because I know thousands of times the last fifteen years or so, I said they're going to set up derivatives. They're going to implode it around 2011, 2012. Uh, they're going to set up a bank of the world. You pay carbon taxes and value-added taxes, too. And, and I would have loved to have, and now it's happening, uh, that, that they would implode the euro and set up an actual financial dictatorship. That's now in the news. But I'd love to say, ooh, I predicted it. I didn't predict it. Globalists write white papers that are thinly veiled. In some cases, they're not even veiled. And, and I appreciate your call. I'm going to give somebody some big... Big inside baseball here. Okay, this is this is big inside baseball. And I've talked about it a lot, but th th this is big. You want to understand the heart of things, it's this. The globalists are masters of psychology. And when they staged 9-11, they knew that every major corporation, every government, and every historian would immediately know what had happened. I, I'm, not, I'm not that smart. I know, millions know. So 9-11 is a, is a two-way, double-edged sword. For people that are intelligent, you, you know, it's weird. I can tell whoever wrote it. I, I, I watched uh, last night. Um, and now I'm having one of those moments because I have too much data. That's the problem. Too much data. Um, what's the movie with... Uh, it'll pop my head in a minute. It's the movie where you take a pill and it makes you a lot smarter. Then you've got to have the pill. And the guy ends up being a politician at the end. I watched it super late. I don't normally stay up late. and I'll, I'll remember it here in a moment. Uh, it's got uh, Robert De Niro in it. And I don't know the young guy who plays it, but the way everything speeds through and photographic memory. And that's the way my brain's always worked. Not that good, but you can tell that the, whoever wrote that has experienced it, where we're like, you just have thousands of data points. The, the problem is being able to articulate it. Uh, but I can just see the edge of a book and remember data from this and add it to a whole bunch of other data, you know, to then understand it. So I am able to take their full spectrum information and then take their, their veiled operations See, they have a language that's only thinly veiled so they can communicate with each other through talking points. And sometimes they don't even veil it. I mean, Gary Hart, five years ago, wrote a letter to Iran. They published it in the Huffington Post saying the U.S. government staged Gulf of Tonkin um, and all these other events, the sinking in the main. Limitless is the name of the uh, movie. And... Again, I had that data. There's just such an ocean of data that I, I couldn't get to it because I'm busy with the cerebral cortex trying to scan all the information. We're all like that. The subconscious is just like not 10 times more powerful, 1,000 or more. And again, I'm trying to, I mean, that's an intuition. Intuition is not an intuition. It is a subconscious that's 1,000 times more powerful saying, I don't like that person. And of course, you know it's always right. 
It's never wrong. The gut's never wrong. Good cops have really good intuition. Good business people have good intuition. 